So then they can come back and see it again. Okay, first we'll start with a bunch of points. If you pick out five of these, then they do t determine a unique conic, as long as no three are on one line. Every student of analytic geometry learned this. Five points determine a unique ellipse, or hyperbola, parabola, or circle. These are the conic sections the students are familiar with. In this subject, that is, in the subject that this film is talking about, projective geometry, all the conics are the same. You can't distinguish between one and the other. Apollonius knew that five points determine a conic. He knew an awful lot about conic sections. He could probably construct a conic given five points. What he certainly knew was the eccentricity definition. This means that a conic is the locus of a point whose distance from a fixed point is proportional to its distance from a fixed line. We'll show a case in which the eccentricity is less than one. Now this construction is a metric construction. It involves lengths and it involves angles. What the viewers probably haven't learned is that there are non-metric constructions for conics. Constructions that can be managed by straight edges alone. Such a construction is sometimes called a linear construction or a projective construction. And this is the kind of construction that we're going to be interested in. The first non-metric construction for a conic comes from a result of Pascal. The little b proved it when he was only 16. Pascal's theorem concerns a hexagon. And what we're interested in is the intersections of pairs of opposite sides of the hexagon. Side 1, 2 is opposite side 4, 5. Side 2, 3 is opposite 5, 6. Side 3, 4 is opposite side 6, 1. Now, Pascal's theorem says that when the six points lie on a conic, that is the six vertices of the hexagon lie on a conic, then the intersections of pairs of opposite sides are collinear. They lie on a line. It's usually called a Pascal line. The converse of Pascal's theorem is the interesting thing, and that's the thing that we're going to use. It says, given a hexagon whose opposite sides intersect in collinear points, 
then the vertices of the hexagon must lie on a conic. Okay, so the important theorem for us says if a hexagon has its opposite sides meeting in collinear points, then the vertices of the hexagon must lie on a conic. And this will give us a linear construction or a projective construction for a conic. We have five points and we want to construct the conic through those five given points. We know that side 1, 2 must intersect side 4, 5 on the Pascal line. Any line through the intersection of 1, 2 and 4, 5 can serve as a Pascal line. Once we have the Pascal line, we can determine the sixth vertex of the hexagon because side 2, 3 must intersect 5, 6 on the Pascal line, 3, 4 must intersect 6, 1 on the Pascal line, and this construction gives us point 6, which must be another point of the conic. Another choice of the Pascal line will give another sixth point of the conic. Varying the Pascal line in a pencil about the intersection of 1, 2, and 4, 5 generates the entire conic section. Notice that nowhere in this construction did we resort to metric notions. As we promised earlier, the construction is carried out by straight edges alone. It's a linear construction a projective construction. I, I want to say that again. Uh, notice that nowhere in the construction did we resort to any metric notions. The construction was carried out entirely by straight edge. This is an example of a projective construction. It's really the first example in history that we know of. Another linear construction came about a century after Pascal, discovered independently by Breckenridge and Maclaurin. In the Breckenridge Maclaurin construction, there is a variable triangle. Each side passes through a fixed point, while two vertices move on fixed lines. As the triangle varies under these conditions, the third vertex traces out the conic. Okay, this is going to be pretty tricky to see in motion, so you better repeat it. There's a variable triangle. Each side varies on a fixed point. Two vertices vary on fixed lines, and the third vertex traces out the conic. From our five given points, we can set up the breckenridge maclaurin construction in various ways, but the resulting conic is always the same, naturally because five points determine a unique conic. The way you set up the construction from five given points is a little tricky. If you really want to understand it, you have to play around with it. We can show several ways of doing it. Still a century later, in the heyday of projective geometry, Steiner came along and showed how to generate conics 
using projective transformations, namely the projectivities. In this construction, we're going to be interested in the intersections of corresponding lines of a projectivity. First, we have a pencil on P, perspective with a pencil through Q. The axis of perspectivity is M. The pencil through Q is perspective with the pencil through R. The axis of perspectivity now is N. This means that the pencil through P is projective with the pencil through R. The intersections of corresponding lines of this projectivity lie on a conic. Now, Steiner didn't specify that the projectivity had to be the product of two perspectivities. It could be any number. In other words, a conic is the locus of points of intersections of corresponding lines of two projective pencils. Notice that the corresponding lines of the three pencils of this projectivity form the variable triangle of the breakenridge maclaurin construction. So you see that the breakenridge maclaurin construction comes out of the Steiner construction. Pascal's construction is also a special case of Steiner's. We'll take five points. I'll set up Pascal's construction and you'll see that the pencil through point 5 is projective with the pencil through point 1. I'll show you the perspectivities involved in the projectivity. There is still another projective construction that's obviously a generalization of breakenridge Maclaurin's work. Instead of a variable triangle, we have a variable pentagon. Each side varies on a fixed point. Four of the vertices vary on fixed lines. The fifth vertex traces a conic. This construction also follows from Steiner's work. The fixed points of the construction are the centers of the pencils involved in the projectivity. The fixed lines are the axes. The intersections of corresponding lines of this projectivity relating the pencil on P to the pencil on Q trace out the conic. This generalization is due to Poncelet, the inventor of projective geometry. He stated it in truly general form. He said, consider a polygon of n sides. Each side varies on a fixed point. n minus 1 of the vertices vary on fixed lines. In this case, the nth vertex traces a conic. Now we have four different projective methods of generating a conic. 
and they're all related. This can most easily be seen by noting that Steiner's method leads directly to the other three.